thank you all for coming here today. What, what an honor. Um, and to Winchester, Team Winchester, for displaying my work so beautifully. I, I can't remember the last time I saw my work looking so nicely placed. Now, um, most of you know me as a thrower, uh, as in with clay. And in the last couple of years, I've started to experiment a lot more and uh, started working with teams. Uh, the first team would be uh, Lisa Sanfire over there and uh, Jay McDonald. And they're the glass artists that I work with. And uh, they have talked to me about possibly working together to uh, produce my forms in glass. And at first, I didn't have a, a clue how we would do that. Uh, but a few blow sessions later, we started figuring things out. And it's been a huge but exciting learning curve. Uh, developing these long stems, the forms are challenging to do in, in clay, and they're also challenging to do in glass. Uh, along the road, as we've been learning about how to make the long stems, we've had a lot of pieces that have ended up on the floor. <laughs> on the floor has taken on a whole new meaning for me. I'll never forget the first time we were working on a very long, actually I think it was a torpedo form, which is ex exceptionally difficult to produce because it's pointed on both ends. And it was almost done and I'm just like jonesing over it. It looks so beautiful and poof. And I didn't even know that could happen. I'm like, and Lisa, I like look at them like, what happened? Oh, temperature difference. Like, oh, temperature difference. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So I guess, you know, it just got a little bit cold and off it went. And so we learned. We, try, we always regroup after we lose something on the floor, talk about what went wrong, tweak, and move on to the next piece. Uh, and now we've been blowing together for two years and are developing some really interesting uh, forms of color combinations that uh, I can't, actually can't wait to get back into the shop and work on the next body of work. Uh, when you see these pieces, like this piece, with the one color on the inside and another color on the outside, Whenever we're doing the two tones, we need to actually make a cup of glass that's white to separate the colors so the colors don't blend, which makes the, the colors as true as they are. And then a piece like this, when you see them frosted, they've been sandblasted. And then these are the, the shiny surfaces. Then, uh, of course, I, I go uh, foraging on the local beaches and when I'm walking places looking for rocks that I think will suit a piece that I've made. And then I work with yet another person, a, a Daniel Klein, a, a rock sculptor, and he drills the holes for me and cuts the bases, and then I figure out how to mount the pieces in them. But all the pieces are designed so that the piece can be lifted out of the rock for shipping and then remounted back in. Now, these pieces here are my first explorations in slip casting. And this, I never uh, had an interest in slip casting because, well, young Mary looked at people that slip cast and go, I throw. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I want to cast? Right? But uh, old Mary now realizes that, uh, oh, slip casting is a whole nother feel and opens up a whole nother uh, bunch of opportunities that uh, where there are certain limitations when you're throwing, especially as you age and you start to lose muscle strength. Some of the bigger forms become more of a challenge. Throwing things with these long stems, definitely challenging. However, when you're making a mold and working from a mold, you can make these beautiful long stems. So enter uh, stage left, my friend David Dolphin over there, uh, who uh, has been making molds for me. And this was the very first mold that we made. And it was patterned off of a glass blown piece that we made. So what we did was the, the blown piece looked so beautiful, I took a photograph of it, I sent it to David, and we took the outline of it and made the mold from that. So the other mold there that you see is, has been done the same way. So the glass, it's interesting. My form, my clay forms, initially informed the glass. Now the glass is starting to inform the clay. And even in the glazes, people are saying, oh my god, is that glass? Is that clay? Uh, the glazes themselves are becoming more glass-like. And in the past, most of my work, I've uh, worked with glazes that are very, uh, hmm, how to put this, up from the Adriatic to you, very earthy uh, pieces that look like they could have been dug up from antiquity. And now I'm moving into this much more colorful, 
uh, approach, which is totally inspired by the glass. Ah. When you see pieces like these, with the bubbly glaze on the inside, these are what we call crawl glazes. And these are all glazes that have been loaded up with a, a form of clay or magnesium carbonate, and they're designed to shrink as they fire. So they beat up to show the glaze underneath. And when you see these black bases, these are made out of clay. And they're mounted in that. Now, piece like this, these pieces have been layered up and fired multiple times to get the different layers of color and then mounted in the rock. This piece here, one of the glass torpedo forms, uh, very challenging for us to do. The patterning on the outside uh, is done with copper foil and powdered white glass that's blended into the hot surface while we're working. And I don't know if a lot of you have watched glass floors, but generally you work from one end of the piece and then you need to switch and put your pipe on, you need to take it from one pipe to the other pipe. This is always a tricky point. That's when often on the floor happens. But hopefully not. Uh, and with these, we had to develop, to make these long stems, we, we actually had to make an extra little glass cup that we would put over the stem with a big gob of glass around it to hold it so that it wouldn't, long stems, very problematic. But uh, really liking how they're turning out. And I'm hopeful to design a, a piece like this in clay uh, my first attempts haven't worked, but I already know what I'm going to do to tweak for the next attempt. So hopefully the next show we have here, you'll see these forms done in clay as well. Um, now, a piece like this is a little bit different. This is actually modeled after one of my bottle vase forms, and it's been done in sections. Uh, probably the most technically difficult out of the pieces that are here today. Any questions? Who has any questions for me? No? Do you know what color palettes you'll be using for the clays? For the glaze? Clays. For the clay. Clay. The ones you haven't done yet. Well, I do have lots of ideas. I'm, I'm, that's always, that's something that's always morphing around and uh, I must admit that um, I've never used stains before because I always thought they had a very generic quality mm -hmm. but now that I'm working with the different colors in the glass I'm considering working into working in some stains into the glazes so really hard to say what you'll see in the future that way right now I'm pretty uh, hung up on the this glaze uh, which, this is what I call my baking soda blue glaze, and it's over top of a, a dark blue slip. That's the same glaze over, over there, but over top of just a regular clay body. So the glazes will react to what you put on, on them, or what is underneath them. And then of course there's my altered vessels, these pieces that have been sculpted at the top. This is a, a particular favorite with the different colors on the inside. And uh, yeah, once again, you can see there's more yellows and oranges and all sorts of different tones coming along. <coughs> so Mary, Mary, for something like that, how many different firings does it take? Ooh, well, that one about three, three different firings. That's the other thing. A lot of these pieces, uh, the glazes are layered up through multiple firings. It doesn't happen all at once. And if each time you fire, you risk. But also, the more you rest, the more you get sometimes. Mary, yes? Are there different temperatures each time or...? Uh, sometimes. <coughs> oh. Yeah, sometimes I'll go a little hotter and then I'll bring it down a little bit for the next firing, depending on what glaze I'm using, because some of the glazes prefer a little lower melt point, some a bit higher. Uh, there's a lot of science involved in it. A lot of science. <laughs> But mainly for this show, I've been working on this show for just over a year, and I really have, uh, I really have to thank my, my team, Lisa Samfire, Jay McDonald, David Dolphin, because a lot of these pieces would not have come into being if I hadn't started working with these artisans over the last couple of years. Uh, they've really helped bring my creative world into a whole other realm and opened all sorts of doors for me. I've always been a lone wolf, potting at home, and uh, not never really worked with other people jointly on things. 
and uh, it's been a really interesting exploration. And I'm loving the results. Very exciting. Uh, can't wait for the next body of work. Where do you do your glass uh, flow? Mount Sicker Road, there's a little hot shop there that we rent. Though, you know, if we're going to do some bigger pieces, we may need to go down to Seattle. Because we have a, a very small glory hole there, where we're, where we're working now. So we can't go too big. Well, thank you so all so very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you.